Uh, hi, everybody. Um, great to be here. Two things that I did want to start with, and, and that's two myths to debunk. You'll see in your brochures that I'm Jamie True. And actually, I'm not. I am, as Debbie said, Mark Watson. I'm head of sales, marketing, and delivery at Work Angel. Um, the second myth that I wanted to debunk is that I'm not here to sell to you. However, if any of you would like assistance in your buying process, <laughs> please feel free to speak to me at the end or one of my colleagues down here. Okay. So, what I do want to talk about is <clears throat> three things, HR technology and some big disruptions that we see happening. And I've got some useful stats from Bursin and also from Harvard Business Review just to back that up. So it's a slightly independent view rather than a work angel view. And then we want to talk about smartphones and what's going on with smartphones, how are they being used in HR and how can you use them to drive engagement in a very different way. And then thirdly, just want to talk about, it's not all about benefits. I know there's been a lot of talk about benefits and how they're used and not used within organisations. And I just wanted to give a slightly different view of that. I'm going to have four questions. So if you could get your dongles out, and by dongles I mean the black things on the uh, side, um, and don't press yet because there's a little bit of a story to go with this first one. So I'm sure you've all, all heard of Black Friday. In America, just as a bit of context for this and, and to help you get the right answer, in America in 2015, on Black Friday, $1.7 billion was spent online. $1.7 billion. Massive amount of money. In China, they have what's called Singles Day, where everyone who doesn't have a partner, or who used to have a partner, has no longer got a partner, actually goes online or offline and buys themselves a gift. <laughs> Which, for those singletons in the audience, is a fantastic thing. It's not spread here yet. When, when <clears throat> about 10 years ago, people used to say, go west, young man. I think now it's go east. So it's a fantastic concept, Singles Day. And you've all heard of the platform Alibaba, which is the Chinese version of good old Amazon. And the question is, how much was spent online on that platform on Singles Day in China 2015? 1 billion? 8.1 or 17? Please click. You, you can't take part, you're cheap. So, okay, I knew I should have put the figures a different way around. Uh, so the answer is actually 17 billion, which I think is amazing. In one day, 17 billion dollars spent on yourself. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> um, and I think we should replicate it. So, um, great answer, but when you compare that to the 1.7 billion Black Friday, it just blows it out of the water. And uh, you know, if you think of 17 billion, I think I'm right in saying it's nine zeros. It's a, it's a hell of a lot of money. Then the second question is, of that $17 billion spent online, how much was transacted via a mobile phone? 15, 45 or 17, please press your buttons. Correct. <laughs> I, I'll, I'll change the figures next time. So 70% uh, um, was spent via mobile, which, you know, when I first heard this, first of all, the quantum of 17 billion blew me away. But then when I was told 70% was actually transacted via a mobile phone, right, and the East is now leading the West, not vice versa, I think the stats are amazing and it's a sign of what's coming. So, um, 
congratulations to those who got it right. I think that I uh, uh, made it a bit easy. So then let's, let's go on to uh, disruptions in 2016. What's happening? There's a Bursin report, and we like Bursin. Um, uh, you know, we think that he's on the money. And he writes a report each year which has 10 key themes for what's going to be disruptive in that year. I've taken three out of those 10 just to talk about. I'd love to talk about the 10, but I probably don't have time. Um, so the first one is, you know, what's changing in the game? The first one is consumerization. And what he talks about here is that companies now need to be thinking employee tools, not HR tools, but employee tools. And the, the, the facts under those are they need to be fun. They need to be something that a person is engaged with. They need to be game-like. And they need to be easy to use with a consumer-like experience. So we talk to lots of organisations who spend a lot of money on apps or websites for their clients where they invest millions or tens of millions of pounds. And yet when we talk to them about HR and ask how much they're spending on that technology experience for their employees, as I'm sure all of you people in HR will know, the answer is a fraction of that. And yet if you don't look after your employees, they're not going to look after your customers. So consumer-like experience and employee tools, not HR tools, is really important. Oh, I might have gone too far. We'll wait. No, OK. Then the second big disruption that Burson talks about in 2016 is the, apic the apification, that'll be harder to say later, of everything. And some key stats that he just brings out to play to that. 2.1 billion smartphone users around the globe. Big number. Second stat, people are spending 5.6 hours a day. I found this amazing. And I've talked to my kids seriously since I saw this stat. 5.6 hours a day on the internet. And greater than 50% of that, again, is internet access via a mobile phone. Smartphones are changing the way people live their lives on a day-to-day -day basis. And it's happening to your employees and your organisations right now. Singles Day in China, I've already talked about. There's a third question coming up, I think. Yes, there is a third question coming up, so please grab your dongles. This one, I'm hoping, will be a bit more challenging. So uh, this is a non-Bursin report, but there are two sources of this, and, and they both come up with the same kind of numbers. So how many times does the average user access their smartphone per day? 10, 50, or 150? And before you answer it, think of yourself. How many times do you pick your smartphone up a day? From the time you wake till the time you go to bed? Three. <laughs> that answer is not there, so you're out. Great, okay, so we've got 50 times being the majority, which if you think of it, is a lot, right? If, if we're awake for, let's say, 16 hours a day, 50 times would mean, if my maths serves me right, you're looking at it three times per hour. The actual answer from the research that's been done on it is 150 times a day. So measure yourself tomorrow. <laughs> Have a piece of paper and measure yourself. 150 times people look at their smartphone per day. And it's normally... Yeah, it's nine per hour. And it's normally in those down times when you're not doing something at your desk or not doing something at work. It's on the journey to and from work. It's outside of work. It's at the breaks in work. I'm pleased that I chose a question where you actually got it wrong. Uh, um, uh, question number four. By 2020, millennials, who knows what a millennial is? Yeah, so it's 1980 to 2000, okay, born within that time span. 
will comprise what percentage of the workforce, right? So that's four years from now, right? People born as millennials, what percentage of the workforce will they comprise? Please, again, click. Yes, uh, um, uh, uh, so that's kind of two all. Um, so the answer is actually 75%. 75%, so three quarters, four years from now, four years, passing the blink of an eye, four years from now, 75% of the workforce will be millennials. So the profile of the workforce is changing and mobile and smartphones are becoming the means of access at work, in your life, on a daily basis, for almost everything that you do, regardless of whether we like it or not. Okay. 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 Going going back to Bursin, just again on on smartphones, just to continue the theme. Um, there was another study done, this was in, again, late 2015, of some of the benefits of leveraging smartphones in, in the workplace. And these are some of the stats. There's about six or seven others, but I've just picked three out. But, you know, using smartphones in HR gives you this kind of advantage. Increased engagement of the app by plus 52%. Response time increasing. Satisfaction of the employee Again, increasing because the user experience, if the app is built correctly, is just wonderful. Yeah? And again, it's that consumer type experience. Moving on, so we've done smartphones and we've done uh, uh, disruptive technology. So this really, the, the, the last part is about, it's not all about benefits. I, 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 I come from a benefits background, um, uh, uh, spent some time in that space and I can remember when I was at college uh, in a studio very like this, I did quite a lot of, of uh, Maslow's hierarchy of, of, of needs. And it's, it's kind of coming back in. And, and, and Bursin has used the Maslow triangle to talk about how recognition actually works and how modern recognition, which is about esteem, you feel valued in the workplace and you feel part of the workplace, you feel the part of a community, uh, uh, and belonging is actually more important in self-actualization, which is related to engagement, than comp and benefits. And we're finding as we talk to organizations, this is just starting to gel and companies are getting more and more focused now on recognition. There's a great recent report out by Gartner called Modern Recognition or Social Recognition, which has nine rules, which you should be looking for to drive recognition with, within your organization. And HBR also did a, a study in 2015 about how praise or modern <coughs> recognition boosts employee morale. And the percent who say they're satisfied with their jobs increases dramatically based on when praise was last recognised. And, you know, we're, we're great believers in, recognize, in, on, in recognition being daily and being peer-to-peer -peer and being social and the effect that it has on employee morale and engagement and productivity and presenteeism is massive. So bringing to a close, this is the bit where I help you in your buying process, so excuse me. Uh, um, from the clients that we've got, and we launched in April of, of last year, we're seeing engagement on the tool, and it's mobile-led, but it's also available on PC and laptop, of 15 sessions per week. So on average, users are accessing the platform three times per day. We call it everyday engagement. It's not a benefits platform where you go in once or twice a year to choose whether you want a cycle to work scheme or a dental plan. It's everyday engagement with you know, an average cycle lasting between two to three minutes and the split between uh, perks and discounts and social being uh, as above. If you don't know about us, um, 
where out the front we've got three components. We've got recognition, we've got social comms, we've got perks and discounts, and as at the end of this quarter, we'll have a wellness and health module as well. Again, all mobile-led, but available on desktop. And that's me done. Thank you for answering the questions, and thank you for those who got it wrong. Thank <laughs> you.